Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And on my last video, I talked about how I lost my leopard wrasse. He just disappeared. So I found him. And the story about what happened to him is a bit interesting. So I thought I'd tell the tale. So to get caught up from the last video, if you remember, I had taken the leopard wrasse out of the 24 gallon tank because he was growing too big and he was a psycho killer. He had killed multiple fish in that tank and he had to go. I wanted a nice peaceful small nano tank and I can't have a fish in there that's gonna get too big and kill everything else I try to put in there. So I put him in the 210 gallon tank where he got his butt kicked by the powder blue tank and the wrasse that's already in there, the Christmas wrasse. So the first day he got his butt kicked, hid in the sand. The next day I saw him up on the top, kind of by the rock and the coral. And I went and did some stuff and he disappeared. And I couldn't find him. And he disappeared for like four days and I couldn't find him. And I made that last video. I didn't really know where he was. Finally, I took some time and started looking around for him. I went down to the basement, pulled all the <clears throat> algae out of my sump. And this is just all volunteer algae that was growing. Nothing real special in there. So I just threw it all out. We're going to do something new with that. But he wasn't there. And then I looked over and saw my rod or two. And it's like, oh, crap. What if he went down the drain? He'd never make it into the sump with the rod or two. I pulled the rod or two and the leopard wrasse was in the rotter tube. The good news is he was still alive. The bad news, he was in really bad shape. So at this point, I'm like, oh crap, what am I gonna do? Because what's best for the fish is to get him in, into a place where he can recover. So the two tens out. If I put him back in there, he'll get his butt kicked and he'll die. I mean, he just wouldn't have a chance there. If I put him in the 24 gallon tank, he would bury himself in the sand and probably be okay if he's gonna live through it. It's probably the best place for him because that sand is gonna give him a nice place to hang out and get better. So I called my wife because the 24 gallon is actually her tank and asked her what she wanted to do. And she had some pretty legitimate concerns. First, we had just torn that entire tank down to get that fish out, we've re-aquascaped it. She really didn't want him back in there, which is a legitimate concern. Second, if he was to die in the sand, then she'd have to deal with the nutrients that come along with that. Because what are the odds of us finding him in the sand later on without tearing the entire tank down and looking for him? So that was a problem. So we elected not to put him in the 24 gallon tank. So I got out the trusty old Aquamedic fish trap and I put him in there. I put it in the sump in kind of the dark corner. There's quite a bit of flow going through there to keep him oxygenated. It's a quiet place away from other fish where he was gonna have a chance to recover. Now, when he first went in, he laid on his side. He was swimming around a little bit, but not much. I wasn't holding out a lot of hope for him. The second day I went downstairs and looked at him, he was doing great. He was swimming around, looking happy, looking healthy. I thought, okay, this fish is gonna make it. He's gonna be out of the woods. We'll get him an acclimation box. We'll put him in the 210. We'll get him up to speed. We'll get the other fish used to him this time. He'll have a good shot. I was really optimistic. So the next day I went in there, he was dead. Sucked, man. I know, it just sucks. But this happens. And I was actually really surprised when I saw him the second day doing so well. In my experience, when fish are pretty bad to the point where they're laying on their side and not swimming around, they don't usually recover. It can happen, but it doesn't happen often. So <clears throat> I was totally disappointed. And I tell this story not so that you guys will feel sorry for me, but so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. I feel like it's really important as aquarists that we tell the successes, but we also tell about our failures. There's a lot of stuff I could have done. First, that fish never should have gone directly into the tank. He should have had an acclimation box 
where the other fish in the tank could have gotten used to his presence. It wasn't a guarantee, but it was a better shot. Secondly, I should have covers on my overflows in there so nothing can get in there. So that's something I gotta think about for the future. And third, when he was missing, I should have checked the rotter tube sooner. Now hindsight's always 2020, and I just didn't know. Now, I had had a Solon Ras go down the drain like three years ago before I had the rotter tube, and I found him in the sump, he was fine, I put him back in the tank, everything was fine. This time, I wasn't so lucky. It's disappointing, but it's what happened to me this time. So, yeah, sucks. Lost one of those fish that I've always wanted. Not planning on getting another one too soon. I feel like I've kind of been there, done that. It's time to think about some other fish. So, super disappointing. Now, I'll give you guys a little update on the copper band butterfly, because you guys were asking lots of questions about him in the last video in the comments. So the good news is when I bought him, he was eating mice. He, you know, he'd take one and eat it, and he'd slowly go find another one and eat it, which I thought was pretty good, considering he had only been in, cap in a reef tank for like a day. He made it to the reef store the night before, which means before that he had gone from the whole, he had been at a wholesaler and before that he'd been at the collection facility and before that he was in the ocean. So probably no more than a week had that guy been in captivity. So I thought he was doing pretty good. I got him home, put him in the tank, fed him. You know, he took a few bites. I was, I've been feeding mice and LRS and he took a few bites. Next day, took another bite or two. Next day, he's done. He just wouldn't eat anything. The next day, wouldn't eat anything. So I've kind of mixed up his feeding. I've added some blood worms to the mix. And he seems to like those a little bit. So I've been mixing in mysis, blood worms, and LRS. And you know, he's picking at stuff. He's, he more likes to have it in the rocks where he can go find it later in the day. He's, he's, he's a picky eater. He's not doing great when it comes to feeding, which is disappointing. So I'm gonna continue to work with that fish and hopefully get him to where he's happy and healthy. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, try clams on the half shell. Clams on the half shell are a really good idea. The problem is I'm afraid that clams in the half shell are gonna to be too much like my big squamosa or the durasa downstairs. And I do not want him to associate clams with food. So that's kind of a last resort. If I cannot get him on any sort of prepared foods, then I'll go to the clams in the half shell. For the time being, I'm gonna to try to keep him eating other stuff that doesn't look and taste like a clam even if it tastes like it, I don't want it to look like it. So the other thing I haven't told you about is I have another fish in that tank and actually I bought him before my birthday shopping. And that is, I have an ORA Aptasia Evening Vile Fish. And I bought this guy kind of as a gamble because I'm hoping that it'll work. We'll see. It's kind of the same deal as the copper band. Hopefully it'll be happy Hopefully it'll be healthy. And so far it's doing great in quarantine. It's eating everything that goes in there. It's loving it. It's doing well. The only thing I'm afraid of is these guys have a reputation of not being so reef safe. But this is an ORA captive bred. ORA says they have great luck with them. The fish store I bought it from Animal Attraction says they have great luck with them and would almost consider them reef safe. So we're gonna try it and see how it goes. We'll see which of those fish ends up in the display. For the meantime, they're gonna start off downstairs in the frag tank with coral I don't care so much about so I can find out how reef safe they really are. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Come on.
Oh, and Dad, that's my job. Thanks for watching this episode of My How Reapers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.